Greetings and welcome to Photoshop Party episode 463,221. <laughs> we should hit half a million by the time this whole thing is over with. Because I see we changed our color coding now for the governor. And... <sighs> okay. Hey, no more hey, politics. Michael, don't go there. I'm, I'm go trying. There. I'm trying. Um, today we're gonna... very trying. Yeah, we're going to talk about some brushes today and LinkedIn go to everyone. Let me try LinkedIn again. Oops, Command V. Yeah, I think you sent it to yourself. I sent it to everyone. It says from me to everyone in the waiting room. Oh, in the waiting room. Oh, okay. Let's try. Wow. Everyone in meeting. Try that one. I didn't know there was a send to the waiting room. There it is. Yep. That looks better. Okay, everybody's got it now? Yep. I see it. Ay, ay, ay. Like I said, it's been a long day already. Okay, let's go to share screen. Click that out. So let's hit Command W to get rid of that. Don't save. <laughs> and. Minimize this so we can get started. And a couple of things on brushes. Um, if you want to do a shortcut to make your brush bigger or smaller, the right or left bracket keys, which is right next to the letter P. So just hit the left bracket key to make it smaller, the right bracket mm -hmm. key to make it bigger. Or if you're on a Mac, you can hit control option and slide left and right. And if you look at my, my brush, it's green. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second. But you'll notice how light the color is. So let's go for B for brush. Let's change it back. There we go. Now it's nice and bright. So r command, I'm sorry, control option left and right will make it bigger or smaller. Control option up and down will make it harder or softer. You see with the hard edge brush, it stays within the confines of the brush. With the soft edge brush, it goes outside. So you gotta keep an eye on that when you're working with the soft edge brush. And on a PC, for those that do the PC, you hit Control Alt right click and drag. Control Alt right click and drag. So Control Alt right click does the same thing that the Mac does. Yeah, well, I dis I discovered something last week. Uh, if uh, your bracket keys don't work and you check everything you can possibly check, look at your caps lock because that's what I. <laughs> yep. Now that you brought that up, if you hit cap lock, you'll see that it changes to just the plus sign there. So if you're in your brush mode and all you have is the plus sign. There's two things. One, your brush is either, or actually three things. Your brush is too small, your brush is too big, or your cap lock is on. The first thing I always look for is the cap lock. And that, you'll see that's there. Um, oh, I lost half of my screen here. There we go. And if you go to preferences, cursors, we didn't talk about this before, but your normal brush tip is the round cursor. So click out of that. That's your normal standard default brush is the round brush like that. If you go to preferences, cursors, you can change to a standard brush, so that's, you have a little brush there to show what you're painting. 
but it doesn't show you the brush size. It just has that one size there. Uh, let's just go Command K, two cursors. And if you go to precise, if you set it on precise, it has the plus sign. Turn your cap lock on and it goes to the circle. So you can, that's the precise brush, it has the plus sign. Turn on my cap lock and it has the circle for the cursor. So that's just makes it backwards. So Command K again, back to cursors. And I like normal brush tip. You can show full size brush tip. Turn off that. And hardness will go to zero. And as you brush, that's what you have. Go back to preferences. I hate going back and forth. That's too much of a pain. Other cursors, same thing, standard and precise. This is more for um, such as when you're doing a sampling of paint colors, etc. You can also change, so you show crosshairs in your brush to show exactly where you're at. So I turned on the crosshairs in the brush, click OK. And now I have crosshairs. It also has um, around the edge of the brush showing that it's a soft edge brush. Let's go to hard edge brush. So you can see the difference how fuzzy it is on the outside. That shows you it's a soft edge brush. Go to hard edge and it shows this hard edge brush there. Command Z to get rid of that dot. Go back to preferences, <coughs> cursors. Brush preview. When we did the control option, it came up green for me. You can change this color, so if you're working with something that's green or red or blue, to make sure that it's not um, conflicting with you. So if I hit Control Option, I've set it to red now. So you can see what it's doing. And let's get rid of the crosshairs show only crosshair while painting, show brush leash while smoothing. We're not even going to get into that. So everything, everything is set up the way I like it now. Click OK. Mike, there's a question in the chat asking, what is a leash? I said I wasn't going to get into that, but now that you want it, OK, fine. You guys want to make me work. Turn on the leash while smoothing. Click OK. Make me a smaller brush. I need to turn on smoothing, so I'll go to my brushes. Turn on smoothing. Let's go 100% smoothing. Make that small. You see the leash? It's following my cursor. There's a leash behind there. Mm -hmm. That's what the leash is. Now that's really cute. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> Let me turn that off because I don't like it. Cursors. Okay. And now when I do it, it just follows me, but there's no leash. I don't have to keep my dog on the <laughs> leash. And thank you for showing me the chat because I didn't see it because I'm dragging things around here. Okay. The eraser brush we talked about last week, refresher real quick. I have a locked background layer, so I go E for eraser. 
And when I go E for eraser, it does nothing. Hit X, and what it does, it paints with the background color when you have a locked layer. So if I turn off the lock and I paint, <clears throat> then it does the eraser mode. So just a reminder, if your layer is locked, then you're going to have a problem using the eraser tool. Um, I think I talked a little bit about the red eye tool last time saying how I don't like it. It kind of sucks. Actually, I played with it today. Everybody can see the red eyes that he's got. Yes. Yes. Cool. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you. And the problem is I got to find the red eye tool. There it is. It's under the spot healing brush tool. So I click on red eye and I click on the red in his eyes. And you can see what it did. Does it only work with red? I believe it only works with red. Well, let's try this. Let's change B for brush, go to color mode. We'll click on sample the green right here. Put some green in there, see what happens. So we'll go back to J for the red eye tool. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work very well with green. <clears throat> but it works great with the red. It used to be it would fill up not only the pupil, but also the iris as well. So there was a problem with that. So don't save, goodbye. And let's go to, we wanna make a brush. We're gonna make a brush now. Really, really complicated how to make a brush. It has to be in black and white. You can do shades of gray as well, but black and white, it will paint using the black. Nothing white will show up when you do a brush. So whatever we have here is black. That's how I want it. So I'll hit you go to edit, define brush preset. This one's called Ink Splat. That's actually the title of the um, program or the, the file we're in. Click OK. And you'll notice when you go to your brushes, the very last brush is the one you just created. So I'm going to go to my blank layer. Click with green in normal mode, and there's your brush. <clears throat> if we do, I don't want that one, I want this one, this one. You see this is blue and it's also got some weird texture in there. The way to make it black so you can get the black brush is go to image adjustments down to posterize. And you see when I did posterize when it's at low levels, it goes wonky with different colors. You drag your levels up I'm sorry, I don't want posterize. Image adjustments, threshold, 
you want threshold. And as you can see, to the left on threshold, you got all the wonky stuff going on. As you drag your threshold slider to the right, you can see that you're getting black and white only. Click OK. Go to Edit. Define Brush Preset. I'm going to call this Splat 1. Click OK. And let's go ahead and fill that with white and paint. We paint it with green. You can see that it painted what was black before. <coughs> so everything that was black is what you're going to paint with. Turns your brush into paint. What's the size limit of the uh, your original? It used to be um, twenty five hundred pixels. I don't know if they've increased that recently or not. When you go to your brushes, this one has four eighty five. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. This one said, oh, 455. 455 is not the brush number. It's actually the brush size. So it was, it was done at 455 pixels. Let's. Go to image, image size. Let's try 5,000 pixels just for fun. <laughs> make it bigger, make it bigger. Command zero. That's 5,000 pixels. So I'll go to image adjustments threshold. Click OK. Edit. Define brush preset. Splat. Two, okay, and it saved it at thirty-eight or thirty-nine eighty-nine. So I guess you can go up to five thousand pixels. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, let me clear that. I'm going to paint with green, and we're going to do a little trickery here. We're going to click on brush settings you could change your jitter and what size jitter does i change it to 50 percent so let's go ahead and go here get this out of the way so you can see what we're doing clear that out make it a smaller brush size jitter at 50 percent and it should be making things bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. So let's bigger, smaller, smaller, bigger. So the jitter, what you're doing is you're making the jitter, it's going from big to small to huge to small. Jitter just shakes it up and makes it all crazy. You can set a minimum diameter or you can make it up all big it doesn't matter angle jitter on angle jitter right here what that will do let's go ahead and clear that so you can see it paint right below it you can see it changes the angle of the brush so it makes it all jittery every time you paint it does something different so we have size jitter going on we have angle jitter going on, and you have roundness jitter, where you can set the randomness or the roundness of it. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. And every time I'm making it white again, what I'm doing is hitting Command Delete because my background color is white. So every time I hit Command Delete, it fills it with, with white. And you see the roundness jitter, 
the size jitter and the angle jitter are all working together now so it's making your brush go all kinds of wonky crazy. Scattering, you can turn the scatter on so it goes all over the place. And so every time I brush, get this out of the way again, command, and then just drag it, and the scatter just splatters it all over the page. And that's the shape dynamics, scattering. When you're scattered, you can do both axes. You can do a count, so it does it a whole bunch. Count jitter, so it just changes things. I keep my count low, so it doesn't just make a big blob. Um, Dual brush, I'm not too sure. It puts two brushes in one. Um, so we could add not only the brush we just designed, but we could also add, let's say, let's pick the this one down here. So as you paint, it should be adding different brushes and it's not doing that, but that's okay. I don't like that anyway. Color dynamics, you can change how the color dynamics work. So the hue jitter changes the hue. So you have different hues going on, different colors. So the more, the higher it goes, the more jitter, the, the higher the jitter, the more the colors. So if I turn it down to 10%, it stays within the greens. If I bump it to 100%, you got all kinds of funky colors going on. Um, saturation jitter, same thing. You get different saturations within the colors that you have selected going on. Brightness jitter, same thing. Bump it up to 100, and it's super bright, super laid back. Super bright, super laid back. Um, brush pose, I do not know very much about that, so I'm not even going to talk about it. Noise, you can turn noise on and off. Wet edges, you can turn on and off, so it makes it look a little bit more wet. Then you have it build up as you brush, and then you have smoothing, which you saw the tail that we had, the really cute tail. Also, what you can do is adjust the spacing. So I'll talk about that in just a second. But what we have now is this brush right here. Weird, funky, really weird. So I go to my drop down on the brushes, new brush preset. You can capture brush size and preset include the tool settings and include the color as you do the brush preset from all of these brush settings that we just did. So it's gonna save all of these settings that we just did. So I click okay, and we're gonna call it splat to settings. And I wish it would type for me because I can't type. Click okay. Minimizes. Does that help you mix your brushes too? I am not sure. So now it included everything in there. If I go to Splat 2, this is Splat 2 kind of big. That's the one we made huge. Way down. There we go. That's Splat 2 if I drag it around. Splat 2 with the settings. It will go ski waddled all over the place on you. So you can do some creative stuff. If you have a snowflake, you can change your snowflakes sizes and 
angles and all that stuff. So it looks like real snowflakes coming down. Okay, let's go to Oh, let's just do this. Go to a soft round brush. Let's do a hard round brush just because. Hard round brush. So this is a hard round brush. You'll notice when I drag it from side to side, it has a nice steady line. If I adjust the spacing, which is in the brush brush tip shape, if I do the spacing here, you can make it into a caterpillar. You can space it out so it's straight dots. So if you wanted to make a dotted line, hold the shift key, and now you have a dotted line. Drag it out to 100%, and you get three dots in that long line. So you can mess with, so it's just little bumps. If you're getting this when you're trying to draw a straight line, go to your spacing and change it to zero, or actually one's as low as it'll go, and then you get a nice, straight, smooth line. Turn my smoothing down to zero, so when I draw, there we go. So, what kind What's of brushes? Effect? Go ahead. What's, what type of effect you get if it is in fact a, a smooth brush or soft edge brush? A soft edge brush, let's clear that out. And <laughs> let me go from hardness down to zero. That's holding the shift key. That's dragging. And I'm using my mouse and not my Wacom tablet. If I use my Wacom tablet and it's pressure sensitive, right now that's not set to pressure sensitive. How about what happens if you change the spacing with the soft one? We can do that. Hang on, let me go back to brush tip shape. Make it nice and white again and change the spacing out. You'll see that the brushes are the... You can what see does you get the caterpillar look like if you're with soft? That's at 0% hardness, so it's a soft edge brush, uh -huh. and spacing is out to 170%. If I do a hundred or a thousand percent, which is huge, that shows the spacing at a thousand percent. So if you did, you know, depending on where you put your spacing, you're going to have the soft edge brush there with the same spacing that you get with the hard edge brush. Okay. But and you can get a caterpillar this way. <laughs> what's that? You can get a nice fuzzy caterpillar this way. Exactly. And then you do uh, color dynamics. Let's go hue jitter, 100%, brightness jitter. And you get a colorful caterpillar that's really soft and fuzzy. So if you change all the settings and stuff like that, you can do some really cool stuff with this. Okay, let's go to history brush. We're going to do a little bit on the history brush here. She has some really pretty blue eyes. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the blue eyes. Nice and blue, right? Nobody even noticed when I said she's got blue eyes. Jeez Louise. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Dave finally caught it. 
Dave's there. Um, I'm going to go into my history brush tool. And you'll notice when I first got into my history brush tool that I had just the crosshairs. First thing I did was look to see if my cap lock key was on, which it was not. Next thing I do is go up to the toolbar, go across the toolbar. My brush was set at 1,200 pixels. Well, that's a little bit too big for her eyes, the way it's, because I made this a smaller image so it would go faster. So I just hit the left bracket key to make it nice and small. I have screen as my mode, and I have opacity at 10%. And all I'm going to do is go around the color of her eye a couple times, anywhere from three to five times. And then where the light is at the top, I'm going to go just the opposite and punch it up just a little bit more at the bottom, which gives her a little bit more definition. And if you look at the two eyes, just by painting with the history brush in screen mode, it made her eyes a little bit bluer. Right? Nice and blue. <laughs> you guys aren't even listening to me. No blue, no blue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My lady had <laughs> when, you, when you do it, you want to make sure that both eyes are fairly close to the same. So go over to the le her left, her right, our left, and do the same thing. And so they're both about the same. And that's just using the history brush. If I wanted to make them green, we can do that. If I want to make them blue, we can do that as well. But right now, that's all I did to that. If I want to paint the whites of the eyes, I go to B for brush, and I have a preset. I don't want all the presets in there. Show current. Thank you. I have what I call the eye brush. I paint with white. The mode is lighten. Opacity, 7%. Flow, 100%. I don't worry about smoothing because I don't, I'm not too worried about that. And what you do is just <laughs> one, maybe two strokes across the whites of the eyes just to brighten them up just a little bit. Brush, but he has, it's lightened 7%. Oh, okay. So we're in brush mode, color is white, mode is lighten, opacity 7%. <laughs> and You'll notice I only did two strokes across the white. Um, there's some blue sky in her eyes. I can change that to a whiter just by painting white in there, which puts more sparkle in her eye, but it takes out the blue from the sky. Now we have two catch lights in there, so we'd have to paint this one out. Um, you can use this clump stamp tool, you can use the healing brush, you can use a paint brush. Um, there's so many different ways to do it, it's, it's crazy. So if I did the healing brush, it takes it out really quick. When I was talking about the history brush, one of the things to think about, let me go here. I'm going to crop this from four by six, 
go into my <laughs> presets up here. Let's go five by four. Okay, if I hit Y for healing or for history brush, I get that funny sign that says you can't do anything. When I try to do it, could not use the history brush because the current canvas size does not match that of the history state. Well, the history state right now, okay, okay. The history state is the very beginning when it was at four by six when I started. After I crop it, if I hit the square next to the crop, that sets my history state as that spot there. So now I can go with my history brush and I can start painting in whatever I want to do. Um, I can go back in and do her eyes again and again and again and again. And I've seen this in print comp from images where they just totally kill the eyes. And then they go on with the brush in lighten mode. Let's take it up so it'll go faster. This is a soft edge, wow. I've seen this done as well. They make zombie eyes. You don't want to do that. You just want to touch a little bit out to make it go away. So don't save. And where are we going? History brush. Let's go ahead and we're going to sample with the magic wand tool. Let's go ahead and sample that green area there. We're going to take our hue and saturation, tweak it just a little bit. There we go. And let's flatten the image so it's flattened. And then we'll go in here, a little curves adjustment just for fun. Bring up the brightness inside there. But we're going to just paint in where we want to paint it. So let's be for brush. Paint with white to bring it back. Da, 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 da. Nothing's happening because I'm in lighten mode. And we'll paint, 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 where we lightened it up a whole lot, whole lot. And flatten the image out again. Now, if you go into your history brush, Y for history, I'm going to change it from screen to normal. I'm going to take it up to 100%. When I brush now at 100% opacity in the history mode, it's bringing back the history of where we began. So I can paint over the, the blue and bring back the green. As long as you don't change the state, either the color mode, if you change from RGB to say CMYK, you can't do that. If you change the size, you can't do that. Um, so all I want to do is take it back to the original mode using the history brush, takes it back where you began. So it's just something that can be used on a cool regular basis. Um, also in the history brush palette, you have the art history brush. I am not one that's very familiar with the art history brush. I haven't played with it very much. Um, but as you go across the top, 
mode is normal, opacity 100%. You go to style. You have all these different styles, tight, short, tight, medium, tight, long, loose, medium, loose, long, dab, curl. Um, let's go with tight, long, just to show you what it does. And it just kind of, as you're painting over it, it's doing some really bizarre stuff for you. That's the tight long. Command Z a couple times. Go to tight short. We'll do the same thing. You see the brush strokes are little tiny dots. If you make your brush size smaller, take it way down, you can actually get a finer point in there as to what you're painting. And if you want to go back to just your regular history brush, you can paint it back out again. So we'll go to <coughs> and then in the art history brush, back to art history again, we'll go to to image you can go down go to dab and dab makes just kind of a little bit different brushing pattern as you dab it on it just kind of spreads the pixels out a little bit for you Um, and then the tight curl long. Let me go back to tight curl long. <laughs> Does some bizarre stuff as well. And you can see if I make my brush smaller, it makes little tiny dots. If I make my brush bigger, it makes big dots that you're playing with. Any questions? That's the art history brush. And if you go up here to the style, that's where it controls most of it. Um, if you raise your tolerance up, it will actually affect more around the area and do some bizarre stuff. I keep my tolerance very low. Actually, I keep it at zero. Don't save. Goodbye. Any questions on making a brush? If you wanted to make your own logo brush, we'll hit T for text. I wanna make sure I'm in black. So if you go down to the color code down here where it says FAFA00, just hit zero and that'll bring you to black. And we'll bring up the size just a little bit. Go to, uh, let's do varsity. What the heck? I must have a very large image up there. Let me close that. Don't save. There we go. You can only make a brush out of a black and white image. You can't make it out of a color image and keep it the color. Is that correct? You can make it out of a color image. In fact, let's go ahead. We'll make this red. And we'll say Collins photo. And we'll go 2020. 
I want to make it a little bit bigger just for fun. So let's go ahead and make it 48. And click on the checkbox up here. But that's in the way. Hang on one second. Okay, click on the checkbox. This is where you have to actually select what you're going to make a brush out of. So I'm going to hit the M for marquee tool. M for marquee. Select that as my selection. Go to edit, define brush preset. Type photo. And then hit command D to deselect. And let's go to B for black. Come on, D. There we go. And the reason it's gray is because I'm at 40% opacity. So I hit zero, to bring up opacity up. And so you, I used red and it made a brush, but it doesn't make it a red brush. Um, if I did the text layer in black, so let's go ahead and change the color from red to black, zero. And we'll do the same thing, M for marquee. Edit, define brush preset, and we'll go F-O-T-O -O black. And go back down to layer zero again. Do the same thing right below that. Oh, it was selected. That's why it wouldn't go. You can see the difference. The one above was done in red and painted in black. The one below was painted was done in red and painted in black. And you can see the difference between the two. What I was wondering is, for example, if you had a picture of a flower or of a bird and you wanted it to be like that, to make a brush out of it the color it is. No. Not possible. I, I didn't think so, but I thought maybe. No, no can do, unfortunately. And my logo, go to B for brush, and I have a logo brush as a preset. And that type or that text is called vultures, what is it, something vultures. Let me go all the way down to V for vultures. Taken by vultures demo is that text. <laughs> it's a very pretty text that I like, so I used it for my logo. Um, in fact, that looks pretty right there for making some type of uh, what do you call the papyrus paper with the writing on it? That would look really cool on that. So where did I get that text from? Go to defonts, D-A-F-O-N-T-S dot com or defont dot com. Let me stop share, share screen again, desktop. Go to there, defont.com, and you will find a bazillion fonts all over the place, depending on what you're looking for. And for some reason, oh, cookies. I don't want cookies. Go away. Cookies, go away. <coughs> you can do an oriental text looking thing. You can look Arabic. 
they have so many different fonts on there, cartoon fonts. You just find what you want and go with that. Dafont.com. And the question was asked about the history brush um, using screen mode. Basically, it lightens what you started with. Screen will always lighten. So the history brush just lightened what you started with, and you're good to go. Um, Use darken. Would it darken what you had, too? Same you time. could darken with it as well. Go to screen share. Go to Photoshop. OK. And if I go to the history brush, Y for history brush, Y for history brush, that's art history. I don't want art history. I want regular history. Thank you. You have all the brush choices that are in there. You can go to multiply. So we have where it says Collins Fuller really light. If I paint over that with multiply, it should darken it, but it won't because command shift option E. And I don't know why it's not doing that. Huh. You should be able to darken any anything that needs to be darkened using multiply. So the same thing works as the regular brushes do. Mike, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, so I don't exactly, I, I hear how you're using the history brush. I don't exactly understand wh why that brush exists. Um, it takes something back to what it originally was or when would you use the brush for other things? Um, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can explain this or not. Let me go to share screen mode. And share screen, go to Photoshop. Okay. If I went in with the brush tool, get a real brush, soft round brush, and I painted in here, and then I went to my healing brush and I did a whole bunch of healing. I'll turn my history on really quick. And you can see I'm doing the history brush way, way down there. And I've gone past my 50 history states that I'm allowed. It's like, oh man, I want to fix this up in the upper left-hand corner. I screwed that up. I don't want to go all the I can't go all the way back. I'd have to go back to the very beginning. So I go to the history brush and I can just paint back what I screwed up. So that's one thing that the history brush can do. And it's a multiply okay. mode, and you can see it's darkening, which I didn't want. <laughs> so let's go to normal and paint it back in. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. So you can fix things using the history brush. Any other questions, comments, bitches, gripes, complaints? I'm not listening today, so you can say anything you want. <laughs> and depending on, you know, the history brush takes back from where you set your history at. So if you set it halfway through, then the history brush would take it from halfway through just by clicking on that. So how did you set your his, history point? Um, in this particular case, it started at the very beginning. So okay. let's go to share screen again. My history, if you look at the very beginning, this is where I opened at in the upper right hand uh -huh. corner. The history yeah. state is that particular one. If I clicked on 
this one, the spot hitting brush, you can see my history state would be starting there. So if I painted back with history, oh. nothing would happen. Got it. Okay. Do you have to have a history brush uh, yeah. highlighted? Highlighted. Okay. It, it automatically goes to opening. Um, you can change it anywhere down the road. So like now I can set my history to there and then go in and do something and no matter what I did, so do brush, paint with white, paint with white. You can see the two brush tools are below the history <laughs> brush. So the history state is above it. So if I went to the history brush, I could paint them back in again. I see, yeah. Can you cancel that and go back to the original uh, history brush? Yep, just turn that off. And right now there is no history. I have to turn it back on by clicking on the beginning. So if I click it okay. off, there is no history to brush. Okay. When you save, doesn't that wipe out your history? When you save, that wipes out your history. It's so no if you longer. Save real often, you won't have any history. Well, no. When you save, you're okay. When you close it after you save it, then you're in a heap of trouble. Okay. You have to I can I can save all day long. Um, but once I close it, the history is gone. Okay. Okay. Your job is to go out and play. Hey, yay. Your job is to go out and play. Lots of new toys to play with. Thank yeah. you, Michael. You betcha. We'll do a little bit more. Um, like painting with play, painting on a black and white image, we'll show you how to make that happen. Uh, and like this image here, we'll paint it so that you can, well, some of it. I'm not gonna do a super duper, oh, I can't show you that because I'm not in uh, screen share, huh? Here, how's this? I'll paint this image a little bit, um, obviously with the roof line. Uh, it's going to be a challenge with the trees there, but we'll paint that and just kind of show how to do that so you can do retouching, things like that. Great. Or colorize black and white. Colorize okay. black and white. Super, super easy. And you'll, cool. you'll, you'll be okay. amazed how easy it is. Any other questions going once? Going twice. Thanks.